Linda asks, what does your 32 hour work week bill do? Linda, my 32 hour work week bill very simply amends the Federal Labor Standards Act, um, which was first enacted into law in uh, 1935. It was a New Deal piece of legislation. Um, that legislation established the 40 hour work week. Um, before the 40 hour work week was cemented into federal law, it was not uncommon in America for people to be working way in excess of 40 hours. Um, and really the drive for a 40 hour work week, limiting the 40 hour work week, limiting the number of hours worked to 40 hours was um, led by industry. It was led by uh, Henry Ford. It was one of the first persons to pilot uh, experiments. Uh, and uh, you know, he's discovered that the optimum productivity way back uh, you know, more than 130 years ago uh, 120 years ago was uh, was the 40 hour work week. And it's important to know that we didn't have a two day weekend. Really, for most Americans, uh, the idea of a weekend uh, that didn't become really culturally cemented, uh, you know, until really the passage of uh, the Fair Labor Standards Act, which set a 40 hour work week. Um, you might be interested to know that um, our Financial markets used to operate uh, uh, five and a half days a week. There was a there was a sixth day of trading, um, and that actually changed. Uh, uh, so, Linda, simply what my bill would do: uh, the forty-hour work week. What uh, what it what it says now under the Fair Labor Standards Act is that you work forty hours a week, subject to the minimum wage. Uh, and uh, anything over 40 hours, uh, you get overtime pay. Uh, my bill would start uh, overtime pay after 32 hours. Uh, and so uh, the idea being that, uh, uh, that, I, that there's plenty of very, very, I think, powerful conversations going on um, at different sectors of our workforce uh, about shortening the work week from five to four days a week. Um, my bill would not prohibit people from working more than 32 hours, nor would it take uh, their hours away. Uh, uh, but, you know, given our current situation, our current work environment, our current workforce environment, um, I believe if we were to implement a 32 hour work week, uh, most employers, most employers, would uh, would continue to ask people to work uh, that fifth day at the, those hourly workers at the, at the, at the um, uh, during the fifth day, but they would be earning uh, time and a half. They would essentially get a ten percent raise, um, uh, and it, it and it puts workers and unions in a position uh, to negotiate upward. Uh, the hourly pay that they have for uh, the four days they're working at regular uh, compensation. So, um, you know, look, uh, the tech firms, uh, companies like Kickstarter are, are piloting four day work weeks. These are not four day, 10 hour days. These are four days at eight hours of compensation uh, with no reduced pay. Uh, this is happening in the white collar uh, uh, tech sectors uh, and other white collar uh, areas. Uh, what my bill does uh, is it opens up the, the conversation about a shortened work week for hourly workers as well. I believe that we need to be having these conversations in tandem. Uh, it's exciting and amazing and wonderful to see uh, that uh, tech firms uh, such as Kickstarter and Google are moving in this direction. Microsoft Japan uh, experimented uh, with a shorter work week uh, without a reduced compensation. Uh, more recently, um, Iceland re released a pilot study on about 2,000 workers, 2,500 workers. Uh, they didn't reduce the work week to 32 hours. Uh, they reduced it by, uh, I think, three or four hours. And what they discovered was that productivity was not diminished. And what that means is that we, for many, many, many jobs in our country, uh, could 
reduce the hours, uh, keep pay constant, uh, but not see a reduction in productivity. Many, many Americans, I think, are interested in this, uh, especially coming out of the pandemic. Uh, people of all ages, um, but especially, I think, young people who are already earning lower uh, rates of pay are exhausted uh, and they're looking for a better work-life balance. Uh, and there are many, I believe, benefits to employers as well. Um, and, uh, but you know, I'm, I'll save that for another question or another day. Um, but um, I am quite overwhelmed by uh, the response. I know that there are many people concerned and uh, you know, have strong feelings um, and they're negative about this. But I think if we just, you know, I think everybody calms down and, and, and understands that this won't happen overnight, uh, that this is a conversation happening politically, culturally, and economically, uh, and socially in our country. It's an exciting time.